Welcome to today's Healthcare Partnership Program webinar. My name is Nicole Gross, and I am the Strategic Partnership Manager with the Amputee Coalition. In today's webinar, we will provide an overview of the Amputee Coalition's Healthcare Partnership Program, highlight the benefits of healthcare collaborations to improve patient outcomes, identify health disparities within the limb loss and limb difference community, and increase attendees' knowledge of Amputee Coalition patient resources and support programs and the value of embedding both of them into the clinical setting. Here's a little history before we get started. Back in 1986, a small group of amputee support group leaders recognized the need for an organization dedicated to the needs of people with limb loss and limb difference. Working entirely as volunteers, they laid the foundation for what is now called the Amputee Coalition and for our mission, which is to reach out to and empower people affected by limb loss and limb difference to achieve their full potential through education, support and advocacy, and to promote limb loss prevention. We are the leading national nonprofit organization supporting the 2.1 million people living in the United States with limb loss and limb difference. Our coalition is made up of adults and children living with limb loss and limb difference, family members, friends and caregivers, clinical team members, hospitals and rehabilitation centers, researchers, students, and related industry and nonprofit partners. Whether it is through education and connection with the limb loss, National Limb Loss Resource Center, receiving or giving peer support, or advocating for insurance fairness and the rights of the limb loss and limb difference community, we strive to make sure that no one with limb loss and limb difference ever feels alone. Within the Healthcare Partnership Program, this was a program that was conceived in 2011 that piloted in 20, 2012. It started out as a base membership fee starting at upwards of $1,800 a year with a multi-year commitment. In 2017, we reduced the cost on an annual basis down to $1,000 a year, still with a multi-year commitment. But now we are happy to say in 2019, we relaunched the program under a no-cost structure so that no hospital or rehab facility will have to pay for a membership fee or the patient resources or the connection to our peer support programs with no annual contract renewals. The vision of the healthcare partnership program is to be the powerful extension of patient-centered care. We hope to provide peer visitation in the clinical setting, reach the patient population who may be at risk for amputation, and provide education, resources, and support during the most vulnerable stages when they are in your care. This also is a program we hope to raise more awareness of the Amputee Coalition's National Limb Loss Resource Center and to ensure that no patient or their family caregiver ever feels alone in the journey. Some of the partner benefits are listed on this slide. As mentioned, there is no longer an annual partnership fee to become a healthcare partner with the Amputee Coalition. Our patient resources remain complimentary and we have upgraded the annual kit to expand the number of resources and the type of resources that hospitals and rehabilitation centers receive on an annual basis. We provide a local roster of certified peer visitors who have gone through the Amputee, Amputee Coalition Certified Peer Visitor Program and provide local connections to registered support groups within our national support group network. We do have designated Amputee Coalition peer support staff who will prioritize partner facilities patient peer visit request if the patients give the consent to receive support from one of our volunteers. And our healthcare facility partners have been the primary place when we host our in-person certified peer visitor trainings. This partnership program also provides the opportunity for a designated healthcare facility staff to become one of our trainers who can actually teach the trainings at your host facility. This hospital partnership program does meet and maintain both CARF and the Joint Commission accreditation standards for facilities with designated amputation specialty programs. And one of the main benefits, in addition to the complementary resources and connection to peer support, is that there are exclusive benefits to receive discounted event registration and exhibitor opportunities at our national conference. 
On this slide is the list of some of the select uh, resources that are included in the annual kit of patient resources. These are provided at no cost to those in need. And our National Limb Loss Resource Center as a whole has served hundreds of thousands of people and disseminated over 20,000 of our resources. Of these um, select items here are listing our main publications, such as our first step guide, which is pretty much the first year and a half of the most frequently asked questions that can be wrapped up into the first step guide for adapting to limb loss. Our bi-monthly magazine, In Motion, is a free subscription available to everyone. There are also research partnership opportunities to expand the understanding of limb loss and the effectiveness of support interventions. Through our Limb Loss Education Days, we also provide virtual and in-person educational events for nearly 600 attendees when we hold them in person. When we relaunched the program back in 2019 under the no-cost structure, we ended 2019 with 22 partners covering 16 states. Last year, at the end of 2021, we were excited to secure 83 partners covering 33 states, including Washington, D.C. And so far this year in 2022, we have already grown to 93 hospital and rehabilitation facility partners, adding North Dakota and Utah as new states on our civilian-based healthcare facility partner state map. By establishing an amputation specialty program that involves a continuum of care with a holistic interdisciplinary team approach, it supports the individual needs of each patient soon after amputation. When a hospital provides patient education materials that are truly relatable to the type of amputation that a patient undergoes, it makes a true difference in being educated and more informed about what comes next. By offering a peer visit to patients with limb loss and limb difference and their family members, it provides hope during the most vulnerable stages of the journey soon after amputation. We also hope that our healthcare facility partners stay connected with patients after discharge by offering amputation clinics, starting a support group, and hosting community events all year, but particularly during the month of April for Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. Other ways that healthcare facilities can impact their patients is by hosting certified peer visitor trainings, both virtual and in person, to expand their local network of peer visitors to come back to the facilities and provide support to their patients and their family caregivers. Some of the amputee coalition resources definitely help provide an improved um, quality of care for the patients after discharge. One of the resources worth highlighting here is Community Connections, which is the amputee coalition's searchable database that was created and is now maintained by the National Limb Loss Resource Center. People can enter their zip code and find resources closest to them by also searching for a topic of interest, such as support groups, housing, financial help, home modifications, and many more. This resource is one more offering for the limb loss and limb difference community and the healthcare facility partners to have important information about issues that matter most and that are close by. Our work is part of patient-centered care, a comprehensive system of coordinated care to fulfill patients' needs. There are a wide ranges of benefits for everyone involved in peer support, such as a healthier mindset, making healthier lifestyle choices, gaining a better sense of community, and feeling a renewed sense of purpose. For patients and families receiving relatable peer support, they gain a better understanding of the limb loss and limb difference journey from someone who truly gets it. There are also benefits for the healthcare system where a patient receives care prior to a surgery or after an amputation, such as a decrease in hospital readmissions and an increase in patient self-advocacy and self-determination. The MPT Coalition's peer support programs consist of our, nas our national support group network and our certified peer visitor program. The certified peer visitor program matches trained volunteer peers who have personal experience with limb loss or limb difference and provide connections to support for new amputees and their caregivers. Certified peer visitors offer one-to-one -one support, information and resources in person, and also through the Amputee Coalition Support app by phone and email. Our national support group network links those with limb loss and limb difference to registered support groups, 
And in small groups of caring individuals, new amputees and their family members have an opportunity to connect with others who have faced similar challenges, learn healthy coping strategies, and practice skills in a supportive environment. Two of the Amputee Coalition's flagship events are our national conference and Patty Rossback Youth Camp. Our Patty Rossback Youth Camp is taking place this summer in person and offers a traditional camp getaway experience at no cost for kids ages 10 through 17 who are living with limb loss and limb difference, leadership campers ages 18 through 19, and youth camp counselors, all who are living with limb loss and limb difference. Through the benefits over the last few years, we have seen an uptick in the satisfaction of our hospital partnerships through our survey. Overall, 100% of responding hospital partners have agreed that the partnership has improved the quality of life for their patients and believe that their facility benefits from the partnership and the amputee coalition resources that are relatable to their patients. Healthcare professionals, patients and families should know some basic facts about people living with limb loss and limb difference to help them better understand their pressing needs and how to provide quality care and meaningful support. And as mentioned, April is Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month. And this is an upgraded infographic handout that can be found on our communications toolkit on our Limb Loss and Limb Difference webpage. A push for recognition and support during Limb Loss and Limb Difference Awareness Month will help the MPT Coalition raise awareness about limb loss and limb difference and provide a mechanism for the entire community to increase their awareness about their needs. In addition to the stats on the previous slide and this slide, there is so much more that healthcare professionals need to know about our community and how important it is for us to collaborate. There are nearly 28 million people in our country who are at risk for amputation. Every day, over 500 people in the United States lose a limb. It's estimated that by that 3.6 million people will be living with limb loss by 2050. Specifically on the needs of our youth, there are approximately a thousand children who are born each year in the United States with congenital limb differences. 600 children lose a limb to a lawnmower accident every summer. The need for our at-risk population, the 3.6 million people, unless there's a public awareness campaign, this number will skyrocket. And it's important that we reach the people in the clinical setting before they have an amputation. So this includes primary care physicians and those who are speaking to the patients who have underlying health conditions that could lead to an amputation. Diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, and trauma are cited as the leading causes of amputation with approximately 99% of cases being contributed to them. Diabetes management and proper treating of wounds and observing safety practices can be effective in preventing amputations, which is an important part of the Amputee Coalition's mission. Having access to prosthetic care for people with limb loss and limb difference is vital to enable individuals to reach their full potential, live independently, and live well. Sadly, there are racial disparities among people with amputations. Black Americans are four times more likely to experience amputation for any reason than white Americans. Latinx Americans are 1.5 times more likely to experience an amputation than white Americans. Indigenous people are two to three more times likely to have a major amputation relating to diabetic foot infection than white Americans. There are also income disparities. Lower household incomes correlates to a higher rate of amputation. There are people living with limb loss who have a household income at or near poverty level who are up to three and a half more times likely to experience barriers in their work and community life. Healthcare costs skyrocket for those who have experienced an amputation. The estimated cost to Medicare is over, over $80,000 per person for lower limb amputations and over 500,000 over a patient's lifetime. Hospitals report that rehabilitation, prosthesis fitting, and device adjustment alone cost the healthcare system more than $5.3 billion every year. 
The Amputee Coalition Circle includes an extensive network of healthcare professionals. We forge alliances with physicians, podiatrists, nurses, physical therapists, researchers, and other limb loss and limb difference experts, and lead the efforts to improve care and increase access to services. We mobile and train advocates at state and national levels for insurance fairness and other issues that affect people with limb loss and limb difference. Another critical priority is the reduction of the rising incidence of limb loss and the resulting costs due to growing rates of diabetes and heart disease. The coalition is, a, is leading a national strategy to broaden awareness of these risks and to promote limb loss prevention. Our quality of life goals include health and wellness, career path development, youth engagement, and community living. And the National Limb Loss Resource Center impact will be achieved by developing and maintaining partnerships. Collaborating will improve resources, services, and dissemination to the limb loss and limb difference community. If you would like to join our healthcare movement and help us connect the dots between care and support while supporting the Amputee Coalition's important mission, which will help us further our reach with greater impact in the clinical setting, we hope you will reach out to us and consider joining our network of healthcare facility partners. These are the ways on the slide to connect with us to learn more. You can email partners at amputee-coalition.org, visit our hospital partner website at www.amputee-coalition.org forward slash partners, connect your patients with our Amputee Coalition support app, and also connect with us on social media on Facebook and Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, and more. The MPT Coalition launched our new blog called Thrive, and we'd love for you all to stay connected to this blog. It's https colon forward slash forward slash blog.amputee-coalition.org. We'd like to open up for any questions that may have come through from the chat, especially for those who have specific ideas or interests in becoming a hospital partner over the next few weeks to learn more about the process to becoming a partner. And if there are no questions, I'm happy to talk through the process. I would be the main point of contact to facilitate any interest from your medical care team. Typically what happens if we receive an email or a phone call, we'll follow up with an email with some specific documents to review that includes a memorandum of understanding, which is our partnership agreement. The facility can work with their legal teams to make sure that the terms of the agreement are sufficient for every type of healthcare facility needs regarding patient information and making sure that there are changes in the agreement to make sure that it's mutually beneficial. We'll have conversations over the phone to make sure that the questions get answered to ensure that there are no hidden secrets. It is a complimentary program that does all of the things to make sure that the patients have access to the resources and connection to support. We also strive to make sure that we learn about the impact of our program so there is some monthly reporting or quarterly reports that are required to ensure that we know the type of patients that are in your care as far as the type of amputations that take place or are being cared for in your facility. We also like to know when we disseminate an annual kit of resources that we know how many of the resources are given out on a monthly basis. And then we also like to keep track of the number of hospital partners who have given consent by patients to request a peer visit so that we know that there is peer support being requested and provided in the clinical setting. Upon an agreement, we host um, orientation calls with the hospital facility team to help answer questions about what happens next. We'll add profile forms to our website and also onto community connections so that if um, community members are reaching out to the coalition and wanting to learn where a local facility may be close to them, that truly understands the unique needs of amputee patients, that your profile listing can help promote the services and programs so that patients can come directly to your care. We also hold quarterly networking calls so that we can check in with our hospital partners and also learn more topics of discussion that are most valuable to your amputation specialty program. We last month held 
um, a specific open forum networking call about amputation specific measurable outcomes. And it was a wonderful hour of just collaboration between the partners, just to help learn what works for them, best practices, and what more can be spread across the entire hospital system so that more facility team members know that they're a partner facility with the amputee coalition. And if there are no any other questions. I see some questions in the chat. Um, there was Perfect. a question about the number of hospital partners who are pediatric institutions. Yes, we currently have seven spread out over a couple states. Our hope is that through our youth camp promotions that we can ensure that more children hospital partners become part of our network. Um, we do strive to bring our youth and family certified peer visitor trainings into the clinical setting where junior certified peer visitors ages 13 through 17 can be accompanied by their parents to become that youth and family peer visitation team. So that is kind of our next movement is we're striving to make sure that we're reaching all 50 states with at least one facility partner, but our goal is really to ramp up our youth engagement and secure more pediatric hospital and rehabilitation partners. Thank you, Sarah. Nicole, um, I see a couple of other questions about um, if as an amputee, how would you get your local hospital to become involved? One person from Oklahoma shared that they have um, ac access or contact with the uh, executive officers at their hospital. That's perfect. And that's one of the most meaningful ways that we secure our partners is through our certified peer visitors and our support group leaders, and also community members that have reached out to the amputee coalition's National Limb Loss Resource Center. We hope that we can help connect back with the facilities where you were in your care. The million dollar question a lot of times is who do I speak to at the facility? Um, a lot of times it can be the volunteer program services. It can also be the physical therapist and the occupational therapist, the nurses, the social workers. So it really isn't a one-stop person to be able to be that point of contact. But if there is um, someone that we can be passed on to, you can send my contact information or send them back to the Amputee Coalition website. But we've also held some meetings specifically with our volunteers to give them certain handouts on talking points so that you all can feel empowered to speak on our behalf about the benefits of becoming a hospital or rehabilitation partner. Um, so if you'd like to circle back with us, we can have an individual conversation, but we're also hoping that we can use our website and use this webinar as a way to ensure that if you all have an interest in having your facilities secured as a partner, um, these, this is a webinar that I would circle back with them so that they can learn more specifics. And then if they have an interest, they can reach out directly to us. And we're always happy to group um, not just one individual from this facility, but have a team approach. So if we involve the legal team, the executive leadership team, the physical therapists, and the social workers all on one call, we get an opportunity to hear their questions and make sure the same message gets out. And then whoever is the right person to escalate that up to the agreement signing, um, I would work individually with that person to get the agreement signed off. I see a lot of people saying thank you. Uh, a couple of questions. One asking you to go back one slide. Yes, um, I can go back. And another asking whether these slides will be shared. I yes, we this are. webinar will be added to our educational webinar um, web page, and we'll send a follow up email to those who have attended today um, with all these resources, the resource links, some of the valuable talking points, um, and some of the information that you can pass on to your um, team members so that we can have a conversation about agreement terms and give you all the information relating to this partnership program. And we also know that it takes a long time. So we're very patient. Um, those that have reached out to us before the COVID pandemic are starting to come back when um, things are less focused on COVID and they're now trying to focus on the, the importance of collaborating in support of filling some knowledge gaps and making sure that patients get connected to the community and get connected to the support and resources that they need. Um, so as you find that things are lifting back up um, we're here and we also understand that the process may take a, a long time for some facilities to go through the legal process of reviewing the agreement. 
Some happen quicker than others, but we will be here and we'll be patient and um, make sure that we get all the questions answered so that when it's time to sign that agreement, everybody understands all the terms and then the what happens next as a hospital partner. So thanks, Katie, and I, or thanks, Nicole. And I was just going to mention someone else indicated that they're working through the process in in Vermont, which is another state to add to our map. Yes, Good news. Yay. Thank you so much for all the attendees' questions and for everybody who is joining. And this is a great webinar to circle back and pass on to those um, that you may be able to share the information with. We were hoping to do this webinar so that it could help answer all the questions at once and give a full, full spectrum of um, all the benefits and the great need um, of collaborating within the clinical setting. Thank you so much for everyone's time today.